Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I'm good, Brian. We're here for the September 1st. You heard it correctly. September 1st edition of Horse Center. Matt's indicating the day today. That must mean he's uh, ready for fall, maybe ready for the Breeders' Cup Classic. The races. We're going to talk about today, Matt, our Breeders' Cup Classic previews or preps, if you will, for the older horses this time. But last week we saw a big Breeders' Cup Classic prep. Well, it's not a Breeders' Cup Classic prep because the Travers is a huge race. Turns out it was a one-horse race, Mr. Shipman. It was. The big favorite ran like a big favorite should, Epicenter. Uh, Got uh, Steve Asmussen, a little bit of redemption uh, in his eyes on this uh, uh, amongst the three-year-olds after the second in the Derby and the second in the Preakness. Uh, um, he was a convincing and dominating winner of the Travis of the Travers was Epicenter. Right, Matt. And if we look back at the last six starts now, a strong grade two, the Risen Star, the grade two million dollar Louisiana Derby, the Derby and the Preakness that you mentioned, and the Jim Dandy and the Travers, he's been a big and convincing winner of four of those good races. All of them had nice fields. Maybe a little unlucky in the Kentucky Derby and Preakness. Good enough to be second in both. I think we're looking at a champion there, Matt, in Epicenter. I certainly think so. I mean, you know, I think the only way he's not champion is if somehow some other three-year-old wins the Classic and and – I just don't see that happening. Even that may, may may not be enough, but we'll see. Maybe horses like Taiba or Charge It can come up big here in their uh, last race before the Breeders' Cup Classic and steal the Breeders' Cup Classic. And then maybe at the center would finish second again. But right now at the center certainly looks like a uh, champion three-year-old and a horse who can compete against the best of the older horses. Matt, speaking of the best of the older horses, we may see them on saturday of course i'm talking about this guy flight line who won the met mile for his only race this year matt I, I like that he overcame some trouble speaker's corner had him hemmed in checked a little bit he waited he waited and then he just exploded and took over that grade one met mile for absolute fun he's won all four of his career races all four or only four or whatever however you want to say it he's <laughs> looked like an absolute monster has the sun atop it all four of those races, the last two grade one wins were at one turn, though, Matt. Now he goes to 10 furlongs, of course, two turns at Del Mar for the Pacific Classic. Yeah. <clears throat> and under normal circumstances, those questions that you uh, pose there, Brian, can this horse uh, that's going to go two turns for the first time going to run a mile and a quarter when a mile has been his longest distance? <clears throat> Those would be uh, a couple of very, very, very large questions for a horse to to answer. But we're talking about flight line here, and we're talking about those four uh, overwhelming victories that he has put up uh, thus far. Um, for me, uh, uh, the question that you know is of most concern to me, is you know his soundness and the chance that something could happen in that 10 furlong race to me that's more of a concern than the two turns and the distance i'm gonna disagree with you a little bit matt i need to see him at 10 furlongs however i'm really not that worried i i, I think that this uh this 10 furlongs will be within his scope he just has a very high cruising speed and and it's a high cruising speed that i think will work at any distance I, you know he runs those 108s and for six furlongs and then he absolutely uh steamrolls the field in the grade one malibu at seven furlongs to end last year late late last year and then the met mile of course after a, a little physical setback the Met Mile was a monster race. He proves that he doesn't need the lead. He doesn't need to go to the lead, but I certainly expect him to be on the lead here. But he just looks, the way he glides over the racetrack, he just looks like a horse who could just turn in those 12-second quarter miles or eighth of a miles all the way around the track and uh, 
it's going to be tough for anyone to stay with him early in this Pacific Classic, and I think it's going to be tough for anybody to run him down. Pedigree-wise, you don't get much better uh, over the last uh, dozen years or so than tap it as a sire. The other side of his pedigree, there, there, there is some uh, uh, one-turn influence for sure there. So uh, we'll see. But um, flight line one to five, Matt, on the morning line. I haven't seen a morning line like this for the Pacific Classic since Cigar ran in the Pacific Classic many years ago. Yes, and we know what happened uh, in uh, in that Pacific Classic with the great Cigar at one to five, who I think had won a few more races in a row than four. Let's say four times as many. He had won 16 in a row coming into the Pacific Classic. He went off at one to 10 and dare and go, dare and go, ran right by him in that Pacific Classic. So you never know. We're going to see what happens here in this Pacific Classic as he goes two turns, a mile and a quarter for the first time. And this will be the race that gets him ready for the Breeders' Cup Classic, which now, Matt, since, since the calendar, as you so eloquently told us, has turned to September, we're only about two months away from that Breeders' Cup Classic. If Flight Line falters at all in the Pacific Classic, Matt, who's going to beat him? I guess we start with the two, Country Grammar, the clear second choice on the morning line at 4-1. to one. Yeah, you've got, you know, uh, the rest of the field, uh, uh, the, uh, the other five, particularly four of them, um, are the you know as you might as you might say from using the line from the great movie Casablanca round up the usual suspects they're the usual older male dirt horses out in California who have take who frankly take turns going finding the winner circle in the races out in California that's not to slight any of them by any means but uh, it's my way of saying that it's hard to separate uh these four because you know they've all uh taken their turns and and starting with country grammar of course you know uh, you the first thing you have to stumble upon is his uh earnings line over 10 million dollars which he mostly picked up this uh late winter early spring in the middle east when he was um uh, second in the Saudi Cup, and then he won the uh, Dubai World Cup uh, for uh, trainer Bob Baffert. Uh, so, you know, uh, I guess he certainly is the one with those connections to make this as the second choice. Right. And and one thing I look at when I look at country grammar, Matt, is the, the distance capability. He's a graded stakes winner as a three-year-old. He got better last year, although it was a, a shortened season when he was four, but he won the mile and a quarter gold cup, a grade one and a mile and a quarter. And then this year you said how well he did over in, uh, in the Middle East, of course, winning the Dubai World Cup at a mile and a quarter. So he is well proven at the distance. Had, had some time off after that Dubai World Cup win and came back with a good enough prep in the San Diego, although he was beaten by his old rival Royal Ship. Uh, Royal Ship has actually beaten Country Grammar in two out of three, but the, different, the difference there being that Country Grammar is so well proven at 10 furlongs. Uh, Country Grammar is the horse that uh, Flightline most has to beat here. He's the, the most likely winner of the rest if flight line happens to stumble let's talk about royal ship because royal ship uh richard mandela has two in here royal ship is the one that everybody's expecting to run a decent race off that big win in the san diego uh royal ship has been in and out a little bit when he's good he's good uh I, i'm not sure 10 furlongs is his distance though yeah i agree when he is good he is very good um, you mentioned the 10 furlong distance most recently. He was third in the Gold Cup, um, but uh, it, it's Mandela, and he knows how to have a horse ready for a big race, and this is a big race. So 8-1 uh, to one on the morning line, you, you got to look at that. Well, yeah, I mean, if you have a horse 1-5 to five on the morning line, everybody's going to be... <laughs> Uh, pretty good on the Osborne after that country grammar four to one royal ship eight to one it's a pretty big dif difference and that shows that people are expecting country grammar to at least get bet despite running second behind royal ship in that san diego that was again his first race back and now he gets a, a more preferable distance as he faces royal ship for the fourth time 
Matt, a quick quiz for you. I hate to do this so early in the morning, on Thursday morning here, but do you recall by any chance who was the favorite in last year's Pacific Classic? No. Number four. Number four, Matt, Express Train. Express Train was the favorite last year in the Pacific Classic. He ran a poor race, and, and that's a little uncharacteristic for Express Train because he's a, he's a pretty nice horse who runs a lot of good races. And he got better after he returned from that bad performance. I was the favorite in last year's Pacific Classic, Matt. He beat Hot Rod Charlie in a drilling finish late last year, uh, the same day that Flightland became a grade one winner in the Malibu. Uh, Ex Express Train ran down Hot, Dot, Hot Rod Charlie. He won two more nice-looking graded stakes this year. Before last time, he was unable to run down Stiletto Boy, a loose on the lead Stiletto Boy in the Californian. But now Express Train, again, has that same uh, that same little bit of a layoff, a freshening after the Californian. And he comes into this year's Pacific Classic, not the favorite, obviously. Yeah, now it's kind of a forgotten horse in 12 to 1 on the morning line. Kind of a forgotten horse at twelve to one, absolutely, Brian. And 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 just read down his uh, past performances. Yes, he was second in that Californian, but you know before that he's got a win in the Big Cap at the ten furlong distance. He won the San Pascal. He won the San Antonio. Uh, he was in, and I'm going to say not what wasn't. It's not a was second place. You know, I know in today's world, horses are not allowed to finish second, but, you know, second place is not so bad. Those are some uh, pretty nice looking past performances for a horse to be, in this case, listed as the fourth choice. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, he's got a very good record at Del Mar. He's done well at Del Mar over the years. Uh, the, the veteran um, is also probably better than ever as far as his last four races with those three consecutive wins and then and then the second where he could never run down Stiletto Boy. So Express Train is an interesting horse to me in here, at least as a value player or a horse to play underneath if you strictly think Flightline is going to roll once again in the Pacific Classic. Uh, the others, Matt, Extra Hope is Mandela's other horse on the rail. It looks like they're hoping for something wacky in here because extra hope seems to be the real outsider stiletto boy you can't call him a real outsider matt he's won some great stakes we just said he wired the californian over express train not to, not too long ago on the other hand he doesn't win much and races like this he seems to always be one of those horses who wants to finish third or fourth and looking at the uh four horses we talked about ahead of him already i, I don't know how stiletto boy is going to do any better than third or fourth in here. Yeah, I agree. You know, he certainly is not going to uh, get the pace scenario that you have mentioned uh, in the uh, in the Californian when he got loose on the lead. Yeah, and, and some of those other horses do have some good tactical speed to maybe chase flight line early, but maybe Stiletto Boy is the one that's second early or tries to put a little pressure on flight line early in the Pacific Classic. All right, Matt, we're going to jump coasts here are you ready blink close your eyes let's 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 blink real quick blink there we are now we're in new york oh that was a that was almost a scary blink from you Matt. <laughs> now we're in new york and this is a race much much older than the pacific classic map but it's also grade one it's also a mile and a quarter of course we remember when it was a mile and a half and we almost remember when it was yep. two miles at belmont park but these days, it's a mile and a quarter at Saratoga, and it's still a very prestigious race, the Jockey Club Gold Cup. And while the uh, Pacific Classic has a top heavy morning line and a, just a huge favorite in flight line, not the case here. Uh, we, we did our odds for this race, and it, it was almost hard to pick a favorite. Olympiad is 5-2 to two on the HRN morning lines there, the Horse Center morning line. But uh, then you got uh, a bunch of other horses, Matt. Dynamic one, American Revolution, two of four from Todd Pletcher. First captain, Shug McGahee, pictured there on the uh, race graphic. Keep me in mind, who's only had one race this year and now is a Todd Pletcher runner. Uh, a very interesting betting race for my money here in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. I agree. A lot of nice horses, a lot of horses who have done some good things in the past. Uh, a few horses who look like... Uh, 
they still have some upside in their uh, in their careers in terms of not having run, run that much and and uh, uh, maybe run their best races recently. But clearly, Brian, this race is a race that is dominated and rightly so by three Hall of Fame trainers. You mentioned Todd Pletcher uh, uh, having four in here, but we've got uh, Bill Mott. Uh, and Shug McGahey, uh hard to imagine that the winner is not going to come out of one of their barns. Yeah, six good horses from Hall of Fame barns. That's uh, that's tough to beat. Uh, Matt, let's let's start talking about the horses individually here. Bill Mott was one of the ones you mentioned, and that's Olympiad. And Olympiad certainly is the most accomplished horse this year out of anybody in this field because Matt, he won five races in a row. He won four straight graded stakes. He looked good doing it. Two races back, he beat American Revolution in in a good edition of the grade two Stephen Foster here at Churchill Downs. Olympiad looked like a real, real threat for the Breeders' Cup Classic, one of the best older male, males in the country. But then the Whitney happened. The Grade One Whitney happened four weeks ago, Matt. It was a uh, it was a letdown for Olympiad there in the Whitney. It was Brian. You, 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 it, there's no two ways around it. It was a disappointing performance. And, and hey, when a horse has come in with a, on a five race winning streak, four of them in graded stakes uh, in in the uh, you know late winter, early spring, uh, uh, older. Dirt male division, which uh, uh, he was dominating. Um, yeah, the fourth place, to, uh, fourth place finish was a little bit of a disappointment as he stepped up to Grade One Company. The other time that he ran in Grade con Grade One Company was in the Cigar Mile, and on that day, Brian, he also finished fourth. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, uh, you know, I think maybe the Stephen Foster was Grade One quality. Yep. Uh, but you're right. Olympiad has yet to win a grade one race. I also look at Olympiad, who, if you can somehow draw a line through that Whitney, where he finished fourth, beaten more than nine lengths and faded down the stretch of the nine furlong Whitney. If you can somehow draw a line through it, he's the clear favorite in here. Junior Alvarado up and and those very good performances, uh, Fairgrounds and Churchill Downs. He's the favorite. But then you also look at the Saratoga, Saratoga record, where he's only one for four lifetime. You mentioned he, you know, he had some trouble in that cigar mile. It may be a big excuse, but he's over two in grade one company. If he's the favorite, I'm not sure he will be, but if he is the favorite, there's reasons to think he can be beaten. But then again, if you draw a line through that last race, uh, yeah, you could see Olympiad coming right back as he tries a mile and a quarter for the first time. Matt, let's start talking about Todd Pletcher horses because there are plenty here. Uh, half of the eight horse field in the Jockey Club. Gold Cup is trained by Todd Pletcher. After no, we, we talked about no Pletchers in the uh, Travers, he came back with a vengeance here in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. First one I want to talk about is Dynamic One, because this, this is a horse who's reminded me a little bit of Vino Re Ro Rosso, who developed into a Breeders' Cup Classic winner. I never quite had the feeling that he was as good as Vino Rosso, but he is starting to develop. The son of Union Rags is getting better and better. He comes off two states two straight stakes wins, and maybe more importantly, he comes off a mile and a quarter graded stakes win last time. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth, Brian, when I was uh, uh, writing up the odds and analysis for on Horse Racing Nation for the Jockey Club Gold Cup. Uh, uh, Vino Rosso kept uh, popping into my mind, uh, you know, for a variety of reasons. Todd Pletcher horse, similar ownership. Um, a horse who appears to be late developing. Um, I remember back to the Wood Memorial when he came up just a nose or a head uh, short in there and, and was at, at that time a horse that the connections were very, very high on. Maybe it's taken a little bit longer for him to get where he is now. Maybe it, maybe it hasn't, but I think uh, Dynamic One is in the right place right now with his win in the blame at Churchill Downs and then a 10 furlong victory, a hard fought victory in the Suburban. Yeah, he's he certainly headed in the right direction. He's got a Rad Ortiz Jr., the top rider at Saratoga in the saddle. 
Uh, he's the stakes winner at Saratoga last year that came in the listed uh, uh, Curlin stakes. But then, of course, he didn't uh, back it up with uh, a very good performance at all in the Travers at a mile and a quarter. But now he's proven at a mile and a quarter. Although I will say this, Matt, watching that Suburban again, it looked like he could blow by and win easily as they were straightening out. And he had a hard time getting by both untreated and then, of course, first captain. And in fact, if anything, I thought first captain might have uh, uh, might have been going best at the very end for that uh, whisker of a win by night dynamic one. He's been freshened since, or or at least he's had some time off since that suburban win. And now he looks to be coming up to the jockey club in a good way for trainer Todd Pletcher. American Revolution also is lightly raced this year, or or is lightly raced, I should say, because Dynamic One's been racing all year. American Revolution only has two starts this year, and that comes after closing out his three-year-old season with a big grade one win. The New York bred uh, son of Constitution won that cigar mile that you referenced before when talking about Olympia. American Revolution was a good-looking winner that day. He's only come back with two races so far this year, pointing for the Breeders' Cup Classic with an eye on the Breeders' Cup Classic. He uh, he was off, out of the money in the blame, but it wasn't a bad uh, fourth at all in the blame. And then he uh, turned in a much better effort when second last time behind Olympiad in the Stephen Foster, he too has a little bit of time. While Olympiad came back and kind of regressed in the Whitney, American Revolution's had some time off uh, after that Stephen Foster runner off finish. And now I think he should be ready to roll third start of the year, a little time off since the Foster. I'm looking for American Revolution to run a good race on Saturday. Yeah, and and uh, I, I agree with that. He was uh, after the Foster. He was considered uh, for uh, the Whitney, but uh, sort of in the last couple of days, uh, Pletcher and the connections decided that they would wait and go to towards the Jockey Club Gold Cup. Uh, and clearly, uh, uh, that Cigar Mile and and the the efforts and the stakes. Um, yeah, he he's got some quality. But uh, this is a pretty good Jockey Club Cold Cup field. Yeah. He's also a stakes winner at Saratoga, uh, just like Dynamic One. Uh, so keep that in mind. Next horse I want to mention, Matt, is the horse that somehow might be more the Vino Rosso going forward, for me at least. I just think first captain, you, you know, he always showed talent, but I, I don't think he was quite there. This is a horse who... You know, you look at the last 10 years, I'm not sure there's better breeding than Curlin out of an AP Indy mare. And, and that's what First Captain is. And First Captain has been developing. Four-year-old trained by Shug McGahee. He's been developing and he's looked great up at Saratoga. He's working really well. He hasn't run since the Suburban as well. And like I said, that, that was really a, a whisker of a finish between Dynamic One and First Captain last time in the suburban uh dynamic one got the win on the outside but first captain between horses was ultra game and was coming back at the wire at dynamic one so i was impressed with that race the race before he really had to surge late it wasn't quite as good a field but he really had to surge late to go by untreated in the pimlico special so i see a mile three sixteenths race two races back where he finished with a flourish and then I love the Suburban, where between horses he just fought on and was was fighting all the way to the wire. I think he's developing. First captain, 5-1 to one on our uh, morning line. Very interesting horse for Shug McGahee. Yeah, and, and interesting in a lot of ways to, that, to me, are similar to uh, Dynamic One. They are both horses that started out their careers with a lot of promise first uh Captain started out his career with three wins in a row. And then, you know, they it, like dynamic one starting out with so much promise. Um, but they've taken a little bit longer to develop. And, and then, and right now, the two of them um, look like horses that are at their best point in their careers. Okay. Yeah. And, and we, we've talked about four horses already. We've highlighted four horses in the Chalky Club map. And I'm going to say this, uh, if any one of five horses win the Jockey Club Gold Cup Saturday, I will not be surprised at all. The fifth one is keep me in mind. Keep me in mind, uh, uh, 
a little bit uh, like a stiletto boy has just been a horse who hasn't found the winner's circle much. He was a graded stakes winner as a two-year-old. He was third in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile as a two-year-old. Last year, he ran in all the big races. He didn't win any of them. Uh, but I tell you what, you look at races like the Jim Dandy, where he was right with essential quality at the wire. Uh, even his Travers, he, he was fourth, but he was ahead of some other horses in this field, actually. Uh, keep me in mind, came back, changed stables, uh, was gone for nearly a year, but came back with a good looking allowance win over the track for trainer Todd Fletcher. And what's wrong with keep me in mind? I don't know, Brian, you know, you certainly look back to uh, the campaign that he had. And, and to me, you know, I, I always describe it as a little bit wacky. We have to remember, you said, you know, it hadn't found the winner's circle very much. But remember, he broke his maiden in the grade two Kentucky Jockey Club uh, 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 as a two-year-old. So that was certainly an unusual thing. And then from there, it was graded stake after graded stake after graded stake all the way through. Um, and again, not embarrassing himself, including the Kentucky Derby, where he didn't embarrass himself in, in that race also. And now the change to change of Barnes to... Todd Pletcher with time off, a very impressive allowance win. Sure, this is asking a lot uh, uh, after that, but he's used to running in graded stakes races. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he is he's running more graded stakes, big, big graded stakes races than anybody in this field for certain. And he's done well. He's done well at Saratoga. Um, you know, he's only had an allowance race this year, but he's a horse of class. Uh, this is a tough field, a tough race to win, second race in, in, within a year, and only that allowance race. But uh, it was a good-looking win, and I, I'm pretty sure Pletcher's going to have him ready. Uh, he's the fifth of five, like I said, who would not surprise me at all if they won the Jockey Club Gold Cup. Untreated, uh, we should mention Untreated because he's ran well against horses we like. First captain and dynamic one without winning. Uh, he ran uh, a good race in the Pimlico Special. He ran a good race in the Suburban. He was right there until the last 50 yards, in fact, in the Suburban. Ultra game on the uh, on the lead, on the rail. Um, there is some speed in here. And uh, again, this is the toughest spot yet. He hasn't done it against good horses yet. But Untreated is, is a horse who could pop up, I guess. Yeah, and, and certainly going to be a, a, a part of the pace early pace factor in the race. Yep, along with tax. And tax is a uh, a strange study, if you will. Um, if you look back three years, Matt, I'm, I guess I'm going back slightly over three years. Tax was an impressive winner of the Jim Dandy at Saratoga. Uh, he was a big consideration of Travers, didn't run bad in the Travers. He's just had so much time off the last few years, uh, especially the last gap was, uh, I guess, about a year and a half. Came back with a stakes win in the slop at Delaware Park. It's nothing like he'll see here, but he's speedy. Obviously, the six-year-old is a very good horse. They keep trying to bring him back, and he keeps running well. I just don't know if this is a good spot for him. Yeah, certainly a tough ask for a horse that is now six years old. Six years old and uh, likely to show speed, though, from the rail, as Danny Gargan has always threatened that tax will be out there on the yes. lead i wouldn't expect him any place else in this jockey club gold cup uh finally i guess we'll do the whole field matt the the, the final horse on our list is chess chief who was a graded stakes winner a year and a half ago or so he's just not looked good this year for trainer dallas stewart he'd be a pretty big surprise he would be a big surprise but dallas stewart has at least some big surprises before um, I guess in his PPs, we have to point out uh, that he was third in the uh, Aladar. Uh, uh, but yeah, uh, certainly uh, a deserved long shot. Yeah, well beaten third last time in the in the Aladar, and that's his best race of the year. So hard to jump on the chess chief wagon this year. <laughs> Folks, at this point, I'd like you to remind you to please, please, please go ahead and hit the uh, 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 follow button here for uh, Horse Racing Nation, Horse Center. You don't want to miss any more. Turn on those notifications so you can uh, uh, see Horse Center each and every week. Matt and I enjoy doing the show for you, so tune in every week and subscribe now. Matt, though it's time 
it's time that time of the show where we do our picks and i'm going to let you go first we started with the pacific classic so let's do the pacific classic first okay pacific classic um as you know as we said it's kind of hard to look uh look beyond flight line uh, um certainly the pacific classic is not a race that i am going to be betting on because flight line at uh morning line odds of one to five and frankly brian I don't even know if we're going to get close to that one to five odds with flight line, but I don't see him losing. It's not likely. It's not likely that he's going to lose. I could see him losing if he if he just struggles with the distance, but I don't expect it. And and you know I'm not going to lie to you and pick another horse to win here. The top pick has to be flight line. Uh, he looks like a special horse, and I think a mile and a quarter will be within his scope. If I'm going to play a horse underneath in trifectas, uh, maybe put a small bet to uh, to hit the board and, and maybe flight line finishes out and those show prices are crazy. It's express train at 12 to 1. He's a talented horse for trainer John Sheriffs. Jockey Club Gold Cup, Matt, I, I see neither of us are on the likely favorite. Uh, looks like we're going with the two horses from the Suburban. Why are you on Dynamic 1 here? I'm on dynamic one for the reasons that we talked about, Brian. I, I, I think he is a horse that continues to improve and may be in the best form of his career so far. A horse that was very, very much liked as a two-year-old and three-year-old, uh, uh, an established win winner going 10 furlongs. I'm going to go with dynamic one. Yeah, he's got a big shot, obviously, with Irad up in this uh, pretty wide open Jockey Club Gold Cup. Pretty wide open, so I'm going for a little bit more odds. I think first captain probably is the fourth choice in here at best. Um, I, I, you know, I can't argue with everything you said about Dynamic One, but I almost feel like first captain still could have more upside. I love the breeding. He's only had eight lifetime races. He looks to be flourishing right now. I love those two distance races he's turned in in his last two races, how strongly he finished. I think first captain could get the job done. I'm really thinking American Revolution is a horse I'll play him with here in the Jockey Club Gold Cup, though. But like we said, wide open, lots of potential winners in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. All right, Matt, that's the show. Next week, we're going to talk more Breeders' Cup Classic because next week we're going to talk uh, Breeders' Cup Classic. After these big races this week, we're going to take an early look at the Breeders' Cup Classic field. Maybe take a look at some two-year-olds out on the West Coast a little bit next week. But uh, for now, let me get a parting shot from you, my friend in New Jersey. Yeah, as I said at the opening of the show, it's September uh, last week at uh, Saratoga, the big meeting out at Del Mar also starting to come to an end. Um, so uh, big races. I'm excited to see a flight line go to turns. I want to wish you all good luck and enjoy the big races. And, of course, thanks for watching the show. Yeah, this is the weekend for me, Matt, where I'm really thinking Breeders' Cup Classic. I'm getting excited about the Breeders' Cup Classic with this Pacific, Club, Pacific Classic and Jockey Club Gold Cup weekend. So that's where we are. I want to thank our friend Candace Curtis for the race graphics today. Also, our sponsor, the best contest site out there. That's Derby Wars. If you haven't tried it yet, give it a try. Matt and I will be back right here next week with another great edition of horse center we'll see you then thanks for watching